Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to change how this BMW runs with this. Okay, so this is a Motive Flex Fuel Adapter. It allows you to run regular 93 octane or 91 octane and allows you to blend ethanol and have the map automatically switch based on how much ethanol content is in the car. So this is the harness that's gonna plug into your ethanol content sensor and it'll tap into your ECU and you'll tap into power using the supplied tap connector. For you to be able to achieve this functionality, you're gonna have to have the standard stage one or stage two license pack in MHD. Plus you're gonna have to have the Flex Fuel license and of course the flasher license. And then from there you have to order Order the ethanol map pack license so you can achieve this functionality this will be for off-the-shelf tunes in MHD I'll eventually be asking my tuner when I go single turbo to incorporate this functionality into a custom tune so I can run 93 when I feel like it or just mix whatever random content of uh, ethanol is available and it will change the power on the fly so in today's video we're gonna install the sensor and we're gonna go ahead and fill the car up with some ethanol and see how it changes things. So I gotta give a special thanks to Spool Performance. Uh, a while ago, they provided me with an ethanol sensor kit that you would use an app to monitor your ethanol level using a continental sensor. So that's gonna be a prerequisite. You're gonna have to have the continental sensor installed. So I'll put a link in the description for the sensor and whatnot so you can have that on hand. There's a couple ways to go about it. Yeah, as you can see here, it tells you the temperature and the ethanol content via Bluetooth. And it's a kit you can buy from Spool Performance. So I'm gonna be leveraging that continental sensor today by plugging in the flex fuel and then from now on we're going to be monitoring percentages in MHD. I'll put a link in the description to the install video as well for this ethanol analyzer. So if you have your factory cowl you of course have to get that out of the way to get to this step but we're going to be unlocking the ECU box or the DME box popping these clips off here and lifting up on it and getting it out of the way. Before anything, we're gonna disconnect the battery at the back of the car before we touch any of these connectors. So with the battery disconnected, lift up on this wiring here, get it out of the way. Pull back on this black connector to eject it from the ECU or the DME. You can take that right out. Same story with the smaller one here. Pull it off, take it right out. So we'll focus on the smaller connector first. Get yourself a pick tool to allow it to slide out. Now, if you focus on this connector here, where it says 26 and 14 on this side with the arrow going this way, you're gonna wanna count three over from where it says 14, one, two, three, which is the white and purple wire. So what you wanna do with that is using a pick tool, press on this here and pull it it'll come out. Now what you want to do is take a small piece of heat shrink tube, slide it over the exposed metal part. We'll just shrink this down so it won't short out on anything. We're in good shape. So in preparation, I'm going to be putting this uh, wiring harness and roughly routing it over. I'm going to remove my dual cone intakes. So like I said, uh, the ethanol sensor was provided by Spool. I also have their 10 micron filter. I'm using their overdrive kit. I'm keeping all this plumbing in place. I'm just plugging into the existing ethanol sensor. I always reach out to Spool and ask them to buy just the kit that has the 10 micron filter, the lines you're gonna need, and the ethanol sensor that integrates into the car. And then you just plug in the motive kit straight into that. You guys won't really be able to see what I'm doing here, but I'm just basically routing the harness down to the sensor it's reachable from up here based on the spool kit and I'm plugging it in. You heard that click. Now I have a cable protector that I use when I did my manual swap. So I'm just gonna route it in there. So as you see, I just lifted up on this grommet, passed the wire through, and then with the pressure of the ECU lid being on, it will give you some uh, weather protection. Could be a couple cleaner ways to go about it by making holes in this and whatnot, but I've had success doing this. This module is just gonna live inside your ECU box like that. So now we have our connectors. Now we gotta merge these into the remove pin. Cutting the zip tie that came with this because we gotta get ground from outside of the ECU box. So I'm passing this through here. You guys should be able to make that out. I'm pulling this through here. Let's tuck in the excess wire. Passing the ground wire out of the box. And as you guys can see right beside your washer fluid fill, there's a 10 mil for ground. Put that loop through there. There's a green connector that's clipped into the box. I extracted it, it just clips in so we can take power. So we're gonna take power from right here. So we're going to the lower part of the connector right here. Take the supplied uh, tap connector, orient it like this. And if you look at this, there's a pin that will pierce the wire. So we'll just go ahead and screw that on. We'll take this wire and strip back some of it. You're gonna unscrew this, slide this over this, bring this. You can fray it out a little bit just so it makes good contact all around. Have it in there like that. Go ahead and screw it in like that. We have a good positive connection. So we can go ahead and connect this. 
and route this back onto the DME box. All right, there's our power taken care of. Now it's a matter of getting these tied into the ECU. So now, if you look at this, this blue wire can just be tucked in. It's an optional port injection controller to trigger port injection or change flow rates, etc. For now, that's not required. So we can just tuck that in there. It's not gonna short on anything. It's just already insulated. So that leaves us with four wires. We'll follow the instructions now and get these connected. So I'm not sure if this is a manufacturing delay or what the story is, but there's a male pin connector on this green wire, which has to go into pin 16 of the smaller black connector. And that's not gonna work here because uh, this won't go into there. I understand why there's a male and female here because you're intercepting. This goes on the other black connector, but this shouldn't be a male. I'm guessing they made a mistake when manufacturing it, but I'm going to remove one of these. I have a spare wiring harness when I change the engine for this car. So I'm gonna take female and we'll splice into this. I actually just got the exact same color that was original, might as well. Back to this connector here. I'm inserting the wire I just made, which is pin 16, so 14, 15, 16 back in here and then we'll reinsert this into here. And we'll reinsert this until it clicks once and we'll put it back on the ECU and push in on the connector while you push down. So we're done with that. So it turns out on this side, I could have actually left this piece in. This could have just stayed in place, just as an FYI, because we're taking it out from here. So we're gonna get this connector here, help it out. So, so on the big connector, you're gonna look for the arrow side and that's gonna be 23 to 46. The orange wire goes into pin 25. So it's gonna be two over from this white and blue wire, 23, 24, and 25. It's going into a vacant pin. And now we're gonna flip this over to the opposite side and we're gonna pay attention to the labeling. We have one to 22 and we're gonna take out pin 10. Go after this yellow wire here by pushing on the pin and extracting it. Sometimes it gets stuck on the way out and you gotta give it a help on the way just with another push. Now you want to be prepared with some heat shrink tube, slide over, slide down, bring this over and the male end of this is going to go into the female wire you just extracted and you want to make sure there's a somewhat decent mechanical connection there. You want to make sure that the heat shrink tube you use is relatively tight fitting so it can hold it all together. So that's decent. Now the other end of this wire is going to go into what you extracted. Just to be sure you can always count over nine, 10. So it's gonna go in between these two. Bring the wire over and click it into place. Be conscious of this so that it doesn't come undone and route it in such a way that it won't get bound up. So now we'll pay attention to this, reinsert it into the connector like so. And we'll bring this over. Sometimes this connector can be in the way, so you can, can just lift up on the ECU first just to give yourself the necessary clearance. Slide it up, get this engaged and then lock it home. And then I would just double check that that wire stayed together before you click everything down and that it's not gonna be easily compromised and that the routing is such that when you put the lid back on, it's not gonna get pinched or bound up. And always tuck these wires in around the corners because they can get pinched easily. If you feel a lot of resistance trying to lock these down, realize that you may pinch something. And given the way I routed my wires, this side of the clip is kind of important to ensure that it's gonna hold down those seals. I've reconnected the battery. I've connected wirelessly to my MHD adapter. We're gonna do a long write here because of the amount of changes that are gonna occur. Even if you already have MHD on there, it's gonna be a long write when you do this change. We're gonna flash an MHD map. We can run the version nine maps. In terms of which uh, map you're gonna choose as your default, you'll choose either 91 or 93 octane and then it will build on it from there. So if you have ethanol in there, it's gonna sense it and automatically run the ethanol map provided you have the license pack. So select 93 octane. Hopefully this goes without saying, you're only gonna to want to start the car after you flashed it. Don't try to start it if you've installed the hardware and, you're, and you didn't figure out that you needed to be prepared with your license pack and everything on MHD because you've made too many changes. So we're gonna to go to options. I already have my options set, but now what I see different though is the option for Motive Flex Fuel Kit installed. So I'm gonna select that. We're gonna go back. Now that I've done that, it's gonna be a long right so we'll start the right process now so as you saw when I selected that option it said for OTS or off-the-shelf maps only if you want this functionality and you've got a custom tune you got to talk to your tuner and they'll integrate that for you which I plan to do when I go single turbo but you guys may be wondering how am I running upgraded turbos on off-the-shelf map ultimately what happens is you're just running less boost so you're not gonna get the most out of them it will kind of be like they're not even really present they're not gonna get the benefits of them but just in the interim I'm just trying this out in preparation for the future because I did complain about uh, not liking mixing fuel and calculating and all that and this is going to make it seamless or if you go to a pump that doesn't have the same level of octane it won't matter because it will automatically adjust and keep things safe but really the o2 sensors can compensate for the 10 or 20 percent more flow you'd get at a lower boost level 
no problem. You can run upgraded turbos on an off-the-shelf tune. It's just there's kind of no point. But I have been doing that. I have been running 93. Once this flash is done, we're going to go to the pump and see what changes. But we'll see how the monitor pack changes first. Okay, that's it for the flash. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the monitor section of MHD, click on options, and I'm going to find ethanol content, and we're going to find fuel mode. I'm going to deselect something here. Okay, so fuel mode. We'll go here. So right now it's saying that there's 77% ethanol, which doesn't make sense. I'm going to start the car and see if this changes now. So if you guys couldn't tell, I redid the wiring. For whatever reason, one of the wires was completely dead. The ground wire was not communicating. So I redid the wiring. I just put a longer wire so this can sit straight if necessary. The pin was completely shorted out. There was no connection between the wire and the pin in here. So I just made my own wire and fixed it. Now I'll plug it into the car and show you what results I'm getting. So with those fixes, now we're at 11% ethanol content. It was 12% if you recall when I checked with the spool analyzer. Now this is what kind of gave it away. The ECA voltage was too high. So I did some searching and that's how I found that uh, there was an issue with the, the wiring. But at the same time, I'm not complaining. I could have easily just emailed them and they would have sent me another one. No big deal. I'm not really knocking on them. They actually put the information out there for the techie people that are willing to fix it themselves. So I used that information to get this issue resolved. I just wanted to get this video done and figured why not just show the repair. But so here we go. Just to put it out there, what happened before with the wrong reading, where it was reading the wrong amount of ethanol, I would say it's a really good example of what happens when you are running a high ethanol map with uh, 93 octane in your car what can happen is it'll run terrible because the volume is so much higher than it needs to be so now that we've uh, corrected it let's see how the car runs when we start it now now another consideration would be if you are running more than e60 or so the map will adjust and actually run less boosts and timing because it's going to assume that your fuel pump is not going to be able to keep up when you do a custom map if i were to get a custom tune then they could go to fully 85 because of the fact that i actually have a stage 3 fuel pump in the helix overdrive system uh, with the modified volume control valve table, I can run full E85 whenever I want to. But that's only going to come with a custom tune. You kind of got to be limited to about E50 with your off-the-shelf tunes. Going to give the car a start now. So there we go. It's running perfectly now. I got this DME box put back together and then I'm gonna go fill it up with some ethanol and we will see how the percentages change. Just got back from filling up. As you can see, it went up to 40.8 or 41 peak. I went to a local gas station that is all over the place in terms of ethanol. So it's kind of frustrating going there. I used to drive much further away to get proper ethanol because if I didn't get that calculation right, then my tune would be off and I'd have to take it easy on the car, etc. My opinion, running ethanol now is gonna be so much easier. If I have to lend the car out, I don't have to explain how to fill it up or what to do or where to go. If the gas station has the wrong ethanol content or their pump is varying quite a bit, it's not a big deal. It's just gonna be automatically compensated for. So overall, it's making me reconsider running ethanol in the car. If I just wanna fill up with 93 because I'm in the middle of nowhere and I can't find ethanol, just fill it up. You don't have to think about it. So that'll conclude this video showing you how to install an ethanol sensor in one of these cars. I'll put a link in the description for it along with the sensor and everything you're gonna need. If it's the first video you're catching on mine, please consider subscribing. If you liked it, please give it a like so I'll rank higher. Thanks for watching.